I don't care what the adversity has been. You have two choices. You can be unforgiving, bitter, angry, upset, and be a carrier of grief, or you can choose resilience. You can cope with what happened. You can upload the program of resilience and recover all and get back to the place where you were before the fall. Stop waiting for the storm to pass and ask yourself the question, what can I accomplish in the rain? What can I accomplish in the rain? Who can I become in the rain? There are people all over the world who are depending on you. So our wounds become wisdom. We have a new program. It's called resiliency. The race is not given to the strong, nor the swift, but it is given to he that endureth until the end. Life doesn't get any easier. It doesn't get more forgiving. We just get stronger and we get more resilient. One thing we know is that adversity, conflict, trauma does not discriminate. We are all acquainted with pain. I don't care how many times life knocks you down, get back up and tell life, I'm supposed to be here. I belong here. Give me what's mine. When we tackle obstacles, when we face adversity and conflict, it is only then that we find hidden reserves of courage and resilience we didn't even know we had. It's literally only when we face failure that we realize these resources are always there within us. We only need to find them to fulfill our destinies. After life has beaten you and broken you into pieces, resiliency is that gift and ability it's the discipline to turn those pieces into a work of art. Many of you listening to me know what it's like to lose everything. You know what it's like to hit rock bottom. You know what it's like not to be supported. You know what it's like to be lied on. You know what it's like to experience emotional, relational, and psychological trauma. And it changes you because you don't know what you are made of until you have gone through something. You already know what failure feels like. You already know what it feels like to quit, to stop, to throw in the towel, to sit on the couch, to move to a substance, to put your confidence in some man or some woman, to lay idle. But do you know what it's like to give everything that you have and push? and persevere. If you're gonna understand the program of resiliency, we are gonna to have to stop running from difficult times. Stop praying that the storm will pass over you and pray to grow through the storm. Stop going around it, go through it. What you go through, you will grow through. Some fights are not won in the first round. Flat out, and the moment that you get that and you get crystal clear and you accept the fact that there are some giants that you will not defeat in the first round. You need endurance. You need stamina to reach some goals. You're not gonna hit the million with the first investment. You're not gonna hit the home run always at first swing. But resiliency says, I belong here and I deserve another shot. I want my opportunity. Give me my opportunity. It's your reaction to adversity, not adversity itself, that determines how your life story will develop. Rock bottom is the solid foundation to build the future. And you've lost everything. You have everything you need. Resiliency says, I tried and I failed. Resiliency has its own mentality. The program of resiliency says, I tried and I failed, I tried and I failed, I tried and I failed, I tried and I failed again, I'm going to start again, and I'm not waiting till Monday, I'm going to start right now. I tried again and again, and I succeeded. See, what a lot of people don't know is that the movie, The Matrix, 
is is more of a documentary than it is a movie. See, anytime Neo needed to accomplish something, they would just simply upload the program. If he needed to know Taekwondo, if he needed to know karate, if he needed to speak a different language, he would literally just upload the program to Neo's consciousness. Well, life works the same. There is a program. We all run programs. And it doesn't matter if you're at the county fair, it doesn't matter if you're at the family cookout, it doesn't matter if you're at home watching a movie in the basement or on vacation with your, your wife or your husband. We're all running a program. And you have default settings within your subconscious. And we have, many of us deal with laziness. Many of us deal with anger. Many of us deal with frustration. And these are different programs that we run. And so now you need to deliberately investigate and examine your internal man and ask yourself, what are the programs I'm running? Because for many of us, laziness is a program. Procrastination is a program. Anger and anguish and bitterness and unforgiveness is a program and if you're going to hang on to grief and anger and unforgiveness because of the lawsuit or because of the jail time or because of the record that you think somebody messed up or the messy divorce you are going through or the job you lost or the business that tanked i don't care what the adversity has been you have two choices you can be unforgiving bitter, angry, upset, and be a carrier of grief, or you can choose resilience. You can cope with what happened. You can upload the program of resilience and recover all and get back to the place where you were before the fall. Get up! Stop waiting for the storm to pass and ask yourself the question, what can I accomplish in the rain? What can I accomplish in the rain? Who can I become in the rain? What can I build under these conditions? Resilience is based on compassion for ourselves as well as compassion for others. The future is hinged on your resiliency. Your family is depending on you to put in the work, your friends, your circles of influence, your mentors. There are people all over the world who are depending on you. So our wounds become wisdom because our perspective, we have a new program. It's called resiliency. Are you willing to lose sleep? Are you willing to put the work in? Are you fully persuaded? Are you determined? I don't care how many times life knocks you down, get back up and tell life, I'm supposed to be here. I belong here. Give me what's mine. When we tackle obstacles, when we face adversity and conflict, it is only then that we find hidden reserves of courage and resilience we didn't even know we had. It's literally only when we face failure that we realize these resources are always there within us. We only need to find them to fulfill our destinies. After life has beaten you and broken you into pieces, resiliency is that gift and ability. It's the discipline to turn those pieces into a work of art. I remember being on my job with no possibility of a future. And I will never forget the moment that a man walked up to me and looked me in my eyes and told me that this was the best I would be able to do. And I came to the resolve in that very moment that greatness would be my new norm. What he said to me hit me hard. It was a metaphoric, massive blow to my face. But like a wise man once said, you gotta pick your head up like your nose is bleeding. And right where they left you for dead, elevate where he told me I would retire from. 
that this was the end of the lie. I came to the resolve that I would not believe the lie. I could hear it in the air that the voice of destiny would reside in the place where he wanted me to die. I made the decision to fight for my future. You will not pause. You will progress. You will not expire. You will evolve. You will not crumble in the midst of crises. You may be neck deep in what seems to be a catastrophic storm of chaos, but I pray that in this moment, you will find the calm, the peace, the hope, the faith, the courage, the expectancy you need to live and not die. To move up and not stay where you are. You get what you see. And that is the formula for expectancy. Your expectation is what you believe is about to happen. And for many of you, you have been so traumatized by the past that your expectations are so diminished. Your expectations have been dying a slow death because of the trauma of the past. You expect nothing. And so you feel like, if I don't expect anything, then you can't hurt me. If I have no expectation on you, then you cannot disappoint me. If you are going to win the fight for the future, you are going to have to have a high expectation. It was Kobe Bryant that said everything negative, pressure, and challenges is all an opportunity for me to rise. It's crises that reveals what we are comprised of. And I ask you the question, are you praying the darkness away or are you becoming the highest version of yourself in the midst of the darkness? You know, when you find yourself standing in the middle of trial, tribulation, scarcity, and uncertainty. There is a process from flapping to flight. How you process pain will determine your future. I need you to fight for the future. Let that sink in for a minute. You are not your crises. You are not what you are going through. What are you expecting the outcome to be? Because you can't change what has happened. However, you can change what will happen. Your responsibility is once you've gone from flapping to flight is to protect your progress to protect your territory. You gotta get a real boss-like mentality with your territory. All the ground that you gain, protect your territory. I ask you the question, when are you going to stop thinking that you are what you are going through? When we step into elevation and we get that, what I like to call that bird's eye view, we gain a greater perspective when we zoom out. And too many of you are guilty of becoming what you are going through. You are not what you are going through. See, in the game of life, those who have an elevated perspective will inherit the future. And it is time for you to fight for your future. How bad do you want the future? I want you to let that question sink in. Because the day you stop quacking with ducks and start flying with the eagles, all of a sudden, everything changes but you know for many of you you are addicted to the company of the duck i need you to scrupulously examine the landscape of your relationships because if nobody told you let me be the first one to tell you separation precedes elevation it's a lot of people in your life that are holding you down that are holding you back there are some people you're going to have to let go of in order to elevate above the noise above the dysfunction to be a light shining brilliantly through the darkness above the uncertainty 
high above all murky waters, beyond the pain of the test and trial. Elevated people will always ask themselves, what did I learn in the midst of it all? King David said in Psalms 119.71, it was good for me that I had been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. And when you're stepping in this space, in this realm, in this world of elevation, you are not asking God, why am I in pain? You are asking God, what am I getting ready to become? With high expectation, elevated people will ask themselves, what am I getting ready to become? And what will I learn in the midst of this? While the world is in panic, while the world is perturbed, while the world is puzzled, you pray and plan your next move. Don't fear the dark. Ask yourself, what did you learn in it? Adversity is our advantage. Decide to come out of this better. Find yourself in this elevated place. Everybody wants it. We want promotion. We want the upgrade. We want advancement. We want to move up. We want to have a competitive advantage in the marketplace. My attention has been arrested by the conversation of the bird. You know, oftentimes learning to fly means falling from the nest and making that long trip back to it. And some birds never make it back to the top. But for the ones that do, once they learn to spread their wings, the game changes. Once they learn to start to spread their wings and then they begin to flap those wings, then all of a sudden their life goes to that next level. And I think a lot of you are stuck. You've spread your wings, but you're afraid to flap them because you're worried about what people are going to say about you. The baby bird don't care what anybody says about what it looks like in its process because process precedes the breakthrough. There is something that is burning inside of us to go to the next level to see this one thing that I'm about to bring to your attention. And if you're going to see it, if you're going to see breakthrough, then you are going to have to be okay with the process that is required. The preceding action and thoughts that are required to see this breakthrough. The baby bird spreads its wings, then it flaps its wings and it flaps and flaps and flaps until the flapping becomes flight and a lot of you are in this season called flapping and you're like man this isn't flying and you're looking at everybody and you're comparing yourself to everybody that's flying and you're diminishing your process you're diminishing your flapping season get through your flapping season with grace and faith see faith is an invitation to the future. Faith is the door. It is the pathway. It is the corridor to the future. And if you are going to fight for the future, you've got to fight with faith. Get through your flapping season. Get through your flapping season. I know you've got tears in your eyes, but get through your flapping season and fight for flight because eventually the flapping turns in to flight. inside of every one of us, an ember that burns and begs us to become more than what we have ever been. It's our aspirations that must become our allies. I noticed that 
Everything that I have accomplished over the course of my life, I accomplished with a new set of beliefs and a new set of habits. I noticed I was able to make things happen when I destroyed the door in the room. See, I don't care what your goal is. It could be relationships. It could be to lose weight. It could be to make more money. It could be to become something nobody in your family has ever been. The moment that you destroy the door, the way out, in the room of your dream, that's when you make it happen. What you do while you are in pain will echo through the ages. Scrape the grill of your past and get all that junk out of there. Of every memory of every failure, you need to unplug from everybody and everything that is telling you that you cannot have your future, that you cannot have this goal, that you can't do what's on your heart to do. You gotta unplug, 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 unplug. There are too many people in your life that keep telling you that you are not qualified, that you don't have what it takes, that you will never be able to accomplish because your resume ain't long enough, because you don't have the experience, because you are unfit. And so you gotta unplug from all the negative voices. You gotta unplug from everything and everybody that's telling you you cannot have that dream, that you are not qualified to have that dream. You gotta unplug. You gotta unplug. It may hurt because there are some people that you're gonna have to let go of. There are some people that, that can't come with you to the next level. They're not qualified to fly at the frequency that you're flying at. They cannot come. And you gotta get in touch with you. See, you can't have the dream unless you know you. Now, everybody wants this dream, everybody wants this lifestyle, but they don't know themselves. And so you need to take some physical evaluation, some emotional and psychological evaluation, spiritual evaluation, and you gotta figure out, okay, what works? And, and, and what does it? And, and what are my boundaries? And what are my limitations? And what am I capable of? And what do I need to work on? And then you need to connect with the people that believe in your dream. Life moves at the speed of your relationships, connections, and circles. You need to ask for forgiveness. You need to forgive yourself. You need to reprioritize your activities. Everybody wants the dream to come true, but nobody wants to reprioritize their activities. Nobody wants to hack into their habitual nature and build new habits that are going to give you the future that you seek, that you seek after. If not now, then when? Dream big, start small. You gotta dream big, start small, act now. Dream, dream big, big, start, start small, small, act, act now. now. Stop waiting for the temperature to change. Stop waiting for your feelings to be in check. Stop waiting for everything to line up. It's never gonna line up, it's never gonna be perfect. You just gotta jump. You just have to jump. There are no roses without rain. If you can remember that, then you will always see adversity as advantage and obstacle as opportunity. Know this, that your process may be messy, but your mess will become your message. So what is your why? Because if your why is powerful enough, then you can persevere through the process. What is it? Find it. Define it. Be reminded that you can you will, you must never give up. The actions that you take, the moves that you make will echo, echo throughout, throughout the, the ages, ages as there is a generation of people who are attached to your why. And if you don't succeed, they'll never believe. So make it happen. Persistence, consistency, resilience, courage, Establishing your priorities, mastering self-awareness, maintaining focus, believing that your help is coming. Because if your dream only requires you, it's not big enough. And I know it's hard right now, and I know you feel like quitting, but you gotta understand there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Stop lying to yourself and telling yourself that you have time. See, the greatest lie that you have believed far too long is that you have time. You have time. 
that there is a tomorrow that that you can drag your feet and you can you can crawl sometimes you gotta run that kid you can't crawl towards some dreams you can't walk towards some dreams some dreams you gotta run toward you gotta run baby run 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 after it run like there's no tomorrow run like you know you deserve it run like you know that there is nobody else that can attain it run after it for many of you defeat has traumatized you and it has left an image in your head and this is why you won't go after it i want you to erase the face of defeat and embrace the process now i know for many of you that's like a bad word you hate process but see the process is a series of actions or steps taken in order to achieve a particular end and in order for you to reach your end that end is going to have to be extremely valuable in your eyes the process is muddy the process is murky the process is dark the process is cold the process is going to leave you in places where you're going to feel like you have been abandoned like nobody believes in you nobody supports you when you don't see a light at the end of your tunnel you got to remember the light that is burning inside of you that nobody is able to put out there is not a person on this planet that can stop you there is not a person on this planet that can puncture your potential if you could just get through the process just get through the process it's muddy it's bloody but it's worth it at the end of the day, it's worth it. No sunrise without a sunset. There is no one like you in all of the earth. There is no one that can do what you can do. You are the only option. You are the only play. Nobody else is gonna be able to do this. Know this, that your process may be messy, but your mess will become your message. So what is your why? Because if your why is powerful enough then you can persevere through the process what is it find it define it be reminded that you can you will you must never, never give, up. give up if you are alive new opportunity get up and get after it it's not about scrolling through social media and looking at people on vacations and looking at the people that are projecting the highlights of their life it's not about that it's about can you do better than you did yesterday if you're walking through or walked out of or survived the worst trauma and pain of your life that this is the first day of the best days of your life. Get up. Get up. Wake up. There's always another level. And it's not about beating the man or woman that's standing in the room with you. It's about beating the man and the woman that's in the mirror. Can you do better than you? Can you do better? than you did yesterday. That's all I want to ask you. Can you do better? You may be tired. You may be broken. You may be hurting. People may have betrayed you, lied on you, left you, but you refuse to give up. There are going to be days when you are not going to feel like waking up. You are not going to feel like getting out of the bed. You are tired of yourself. You are tired of looking at the face in the mirror that you see. You are tired of maybe the way that your body looks, or the money that you have, or the people that you are connected to. There are going to be days when you are going to be tired of being you. And you got two options. You can give up or get up. This is the day that everything changes. Get up! Rise and grind!
Begin waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning. You may have to lose sleep for a week so that you can accomplish what it is that you've been destined to accomplish. What you were born to contribute to humanity. And so I know it hurts. And I know it's expensive. Everything you need to get to this next level is inside of you. But if you don't count up the cost of what it's going to take, and if you are not willing to pay that price, you cannot have your future. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Just get in a mirror and start speaking life over yourself. You're making progress. This needs you to be 1% better than you were yesterday. Get up. You got a day to conquer. Rise and grind, baby. Let's go. Thank you, Lord, for giving me one more day. One more opportunity, one more meal, one more outfit on my back. Thank you for that one opportunity. If you haven't been able to get up, something inside of you has to snap. You've been insecure long enough. You've been unfit long enough. You've been unqualified long enough. You've been overlooked long enough. You've been undervalued long enough. You've been in this cave. You've been in this deep, dark prison of obscurity and uncertainty and doubt and fear. This is the day you come out of your tomb. In this very moment, you have an opportunity. Seize the opportunity. I'm talking to that person that keeps saying, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to make more money, I'm going to learn a new skill, I'm going to make bigger connections, I'm going to invest in myself. And day after day, you fail. I know you don't feel up to the task. I know you've got some doubt and you've got some fear and you've got some uncertainty and you hate the image that you see in the mirror and you hate the way your money looks and your relationships look and people that you've given your all to keep walking out on you. I know you feel stuck in reverse. I know you feel like you're underpaid and undervalued and overlooked, but listen, get up! This is the day that everything changes. You've got to do what is required in order to manifest. Get up and get after it. So take a deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. It's a new day. Control all delete. Control yourself, alter your thinking, and delete negativity. Period. What are you made of? What is your DNA? What is your mentality? What are the skill sets? Come on, start to write down the vision. Believe that this is the first day of the best days of your life. Get up and get after it. You are here by design. You are listening to this talk by design. Every day, every single day is a new beginning. And every decision you make is either bringing you to your destiny or taking you from your destiny. Now some of you, you gotta take everything you have on the inside and claw your way back to right standing. Sometimes you gotta dig deep inside to that person that keeps failing the mission. Appreciate what has happened. Appreciate the people that walked out on you. Appreciate the people that hurt you. Appreciate the people that overlooked you. The people that slept on you. Appreciate it. I want you to get this mentality in your head. Every day, you pay. You pay. You may get two hours of sleep in seven days so that you can accomplish what it is that you've been destined to accomplish. Everything you need to get to this next level is inside of you. 
There's always another level. Seize the opportunity. And every day, every single day, gives you that new opportunity. So if you don't have a to-do list, get a to-do list. If you haven't planned the day, start planning your day the night before. If you don't have a morning routine, get a morning routine. Start your morning with prayer and meditation. If you're not tracking your progress, start tracking your progress. If you don't have accountability partners, you need to get accountability partners. If you have not identified the roadblocks, if you have not identified the kryptonite, if you have not identified the hurdles, what has hindered your forward progress, identify those things. This is your day! Get up and get after it!